Relationship Advice Ex-wife left for affair partner and returned after 10 years asking to take her back. Seeking advice on how to handle the situation. Me, 34 male, my ex-wife, 35 female, call her ex, my neighbor, affair partner, my neighbor's wife, 37 female, call her M. Me and my wife married in 2009. We had our baby in 2010. In November 2010 while she was asleep, a message popped on her phone and was a flirty message. I checked on her phone and it was from our neighbor. I went through every single message which included exting, sharing nudes and even had planned meetups at hotels. This was going on from the first week into our marriage. I felt like my world crumbled in front of me. I took screenshots of every message and saved on my phone. Next day, I contacted Em and let her know about the affair. They were married for 4 years, and had their first baby almost exact same time as we had ours. I confronted my wife, and told her that I am going to give her divorce. She started crying and everything else, but I did not consider it. I also did paternity test on our child, son, because the affair timeline was same as conception date. After two days, when I come home from work, our baby was crying in our bed and X was nowhere to be seen. Then I found a letter of her telling, that she did not love me and she had left with AP, and to not contact them. I knew this was coming, but I didn't believe that a mother can leave her child, was about six months, alone, and can run off with her lover. I then went to M's house. She had received same letter by her husband. I felt sorry for her as she was going from postpartum depression, had her baby just a few months ago and was left alone. Also, paternity test result came back, and he was my son. I tried to contact X's family, but they also didn't know where she was and was shocked by her behavior. Her father even said that if she ever came back, she would not be allowed to enter their house. They basically disowned her. Elle was very supportive. She began coming to my home to watch the kids and even breastfed both of them, her and mine. As time passed, we were like family. My son called her mom and had known only her as mom. We also decided to go on dates. We got engaged a year later and married in 2013. We had our first child in 2015. We often discussed things about our exes and how we were often disrespected by them. We were happy family. In 2018, when my son accidentally saw a picture of my ex, picture after birth, so it included ex, me, and him, so we decided to tell him, that our birth mother ex had died in car accident years ago, and L took care of him since he was 6 months old. Fast forward 2 days ago, I received an anonymous email. I opened it and it read, I want to see my son and want my family back. We are not divorced yet. I knew it was X. I showed this to L. L started freaking out, and asked me if I would take her back. I calmed her down and told her that she was an ugly past, and I would never leave you. I, would never, take her back. Now I am confused what to do? I will definitely not take her back, but should I let her meet my son or not? Should I take my son's opportunity to have connection with her birth mother? Now for the top advice. Absolutely not. She was toxic 10 years ago and obviously hasn't changed. She will end up hurting all of you so much more than she already had. No. Coming from a child abandoned by their mother, who only showed up every 3 years because stepbrother's dad tried to convince her she needed to be part of my life. I've been in a family dynamic similar to this. In my experience, it would do more harm to your son than good. When he is 18 you can tell him the whole story and let him decide. As an adult, your ex made the decision to leave. If you truly did get a divorce, I would fight with everything I have to maintain custody. She left, you stayed. She's holding on to the past, you're building a new future. She is not going to be a part of your future story. When the time is right, you can give the choice to your son. I would not wait too long to tell the son, because I think the ex would maybe try to contact him and manipulate the truth to make OP look like the bad guy. This. When the child finds out his father lied and kept him from his mom, their relationship could be over. At the end of the day, his wife was a cheater and abandoned the child. It makes her a crappy person, but it doesn't mean she would do the child harm. One could say, the lie OP told the child could be more emotionally damaging to them. It would be best for the adults involved to come to the table and work this out in the best interest of the child. It doesn't sound like any of them truly have it together. 1. Telling the kids that your ex died, is wrong. You should never have done that. Your son, and likely your other kids, will need therapy or at the very least, you should consult a psychologist to get advice regarding how to tell them the truth. The more you lie, 
the likelier he will eventually go live with her, and believe whatever excuse she gives him. 2. Assuming you have an actual judgment that gives you full custody, you can ignore her communication entirely or get a lawyer to send her a letter, saying visitation is not in the child's best interest. You can then either wait for her to file in court asking for visitation, or you can proactively attempt to have her parental rights terminated, perhaps also having his actual mother adopt him. Child support doesn't usually have an impact on custody, but a reminder that she has not paid child support for 10 years, and that there are still many years left where it should be due, can help as well. However, only through formal lawyer letter, not by responding directly. 3. You might not be able to prevent visitations from happening. At the very least, ask for a very slow progression with short visits, supervised by a social worker or psychologist. 4. Did your wife's sex husband reappear as well? Expect that he might show up too. 5. Don't panic. Now for the next story. After almost 6 months of no contact, she reached out to me. Why? 28 male and 37 female. So, she broke up with me back in May 2020. This November, it's going to be 6 months of that event. We are still friends on Facebook, she hasn't blocked me on WhatsApp. She's still subscribed to my YouTube channel and I'm her only subscriber on hers. After the breakup, I immediately went no contact. I never reached out in any way or form, never begged or pleaded. I kept my distance from her. I did however, checked her social media last month and didn't find anything. No new guys, no hey babe, love tags or posts, nothing. Just some pictures of her with her friends. She looks happy. But it also looks like she's been really busy with her work, because she isn't the one uploading them. Last week it was her birthday. I didn't write her anything. I did think of her the whole freaking day, but I didn't reach out. I saw that she uploaded some selfies and she was alone at home with a little cake. I felt bad for her. Because she is alone and she drives people away. Like she did with me. And she is older than me. She is 37 and I'm 28. But, she did reach out and wrote me a happy birthday. A couple of days ago. Yes, our birthdays are a week apart, but, why would she do that after what she told me when she broke up with me? She was really clear. In fact, she was mean and humiliating with me on the day of the breakup. She said and I quote, we shouldn't be in contact. We need to evolve, maybe in three years we could try again. If, we ever find each other again. As I said, I went NCR with her, right after hanging up the phone the day of the breakup. And now, after almost six months of no contact, I received a happy birthday post from her on my Facebook wall. Why? I waited until the next day to reply to everybody on my Facebook wall. I used the same emojis with everybody and with her I wrote this, thank you. Hope you had a good one too. Cheers. And that's it. I haven't heard from her since, and I don't plan to start chasing her again. I'm going to keep my no contact. If she wants to reach out again, I'm open to talk to her, but I'm not starting any conversation with her. If she wants to talk, I'm here. I'm not going after her. But, I do want to know why? Why would she do it? Why reach out? She wanted me to leave, right? So I did, why congratulate me if she didn't want to be in contact in the first place? Don't get me wrong, I still love her and miss her, I never stopped caring, but, I'm not going back with her as if nothing happened. I'm just curious about why she did it. I never knew why she left, maybe the grass wasn't so greener after all? Does she need something from me? I don't think she's missed me at all, it's hard for me to believe that. I hope you guys can help me out with this one. Anyway, thanks for your time and for reading. Now for the top advice. It probably isn't as deep as you're making it sound. She probably just said happy birthday because Facebook reminded her, and then went on her way. There's really no use getting worked up on the why, especially if it doesn't change anything. If she reaches out, great. If not, oh well. That could be too. That's why I like posting this kind of stuff. I like to have more points of view. Thanks. She may have an app that automatically wishes all of her friends happy birthday on their birthday. Ha. Maybe. I didn't thought of that. For your mental health start deleting her from your social. This kind of communication only messes with you, is she sad and miss me? Is she playing with me? Etc. You are overthinking a very small interaction, what is next? Look for yourself. She made a clear choice, so why bother with this? Hope you're the best man. Totally agree. OP needs to commit to no contact and block slash remove this woman. 
the sooner he does, the sooner he can get over her. Now for the last story. Was doing okay, turns out the trickle truth still on its way. Now my head is all over the place. Sorry quite long, I just need to write this down, I think. My story is very similar to many others I see here. My, male 30, ex-girlfriend, 27 female, went on holiday at the beginning of the year. It was part of an adventure package so she could climb Kilimanjaro. These groups are mixed, and with the start of the pandemic, this was just before lockdown, many people dropped out. Enter the other partner, AP. They met, climbed the mountain, and then spent two days in a hotel screwing each other. On the return to the UK, they have kept talking this entire time. Kept seeing each other the entire time. During a freaking lockdown under the guise of work. I found a remote controlled toy on D-Day and STI tests. They even managed to go on holiday together. She hid the whole thing under the cover of a solo trip, even posting to Instagram about how liberating it was, and hashtagging solo traveler to sell the lie. The thing is, this has all been trickled truth since D-Day. She has stood in front of me and lied about every single detail. How could I be so freaking stupid? I believed it all at every point, because she sold it so well. Until last week, the AP got in touch, he had been dumped himself and sent me everything. Yes, she showed remorse and feeling hurt when it all came out, panic attacks, the whole nine. But I feel like this was in response to discovery, not the pain she caused me, or damage she did to the relationship. To add insult to injury, I found out she spent the weekend with a mutual friend about a year and a half ago. Honestly, I was doing well just before this came out. It has completely blown my mind at how far and deep, and twisted it all actually goes. I could get over the cheating, but it is the months and years of lies. There is lots more here I could write about but I don't want to go on too long. I just feel so sad to have two years of a four year relationship be a complete freaking lie. God only knows what else has been hidden. I know I never want her back, but I want to stand in front of her and freaking scream and rage. But for a narcissist like her, this will probably be exactly what she wants. Thanks for listening I guess. Now for the top comments. I could get over the cheating but it is the months and years of lies. You need to tell her this, so she understands what sealed her fate. I'm sorry for your pain, I hope separating goes smoothly. Thank you. I already have done. She said she was going to write out all of the lies and deceptions in a letter, to give herself a clean start. But that never materialized. Just another lie in a very long list. But I really thought she had done this one thing, at least for herself. Writing it down would be a confession, she won't do that. True. Just another lie of what she was going to do I suppose. Would have made an interesting read. But even that I don't think I could trust. She's trying to show you that she's a changed person by coming clean, this could be for herself too, narcissists always want you to have the best perception of themselves, so if it means coming clean after being caught, they will do it. My ex told me all the lies when he got caught, even the ones unrelated to the incident. Yeah, she has also already come clean on three separate situations. Each one was later revealed to be her best twisted version of lies. How did it feel finding out everything? Closure or just more crap to deal with? Serial cheater. Don't believe a single word and no contact forever. Get out man, I know it's painful and it sucks, but this girl has no true remorse, only regrets being caught and doesn't want to lose her safety net. This is total nightmare scenario. I would count you lucky not to have kids with her, because she will be one of those who will end up cheating in the marriage. I would bet the cure to COVID, she won't change no matter who she ends up with. Yeah, I mentioned this below. Yeah I should have done it in the beginning. Starting to become less of chump but still have a way to go. All block now, moving again soon, and as sad as it is cutting contact with a lot of mutual friends whom I don't trust anymore. Absolutely the regret of getting caught, and not the remorse of doing it. Thank if there were no kids or joint assets. And that's the end of this video folks, as always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos, and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.